Now it's 106. Point nine degrees Fahrenheit outside. I think it's a good time to explain my crankcase ventilation kits. Let's see. Oh yeah, I got a, I got work to do. I can't just pop the hood open. I gotta get tools. So by now you've seen that our channel is a little bit different from everybody else because we use music that's mainstream that you like, that you heard of, and we use it legally, even though UMG and BMG companies like those, they're not very happy about it. Well, it's federal law, so they're just going to have to get over it. Today we're going to discuss crankcase ventilation and how it can help you make more horsepower. So let's get it. This is a stock, pretty much stock, basic, 940. Now, there's a couple upgrades here and a couple downgrades, a couple even more downgrades for this unit because it's stock boost. It's ridiculous to have this intercooler on it. However, there's some upgrades like this harder plastic pipe because this is a big issue. On these cars, they like to suck in when you turn the boost up and choke for air. This is the crankcase ventilation hose right here. It has a little heater element on it that always has power to it. I almost burned my car down, this one, because of this thing. I actually took this off and laid it down here, and this wire kind of corroded. The shielding broke, and it started nuking in there and ended up burning my harness way back in the dash. We almost made it home, and the car was catching fire inside. Big deal. So if you take this off, tape it up, run it away around the corner, run it out of the way. This is the crankcase ventilation that comes from the flame trap down there. It's a little box. The box is a, basically an oil separator. It separates the oil it's supposed to drip back down in. There's a little, little three-way deal here, union. It goes to a vacuum hose, and that vacuum hose basically assists the vacuum for the crankcase ventilation when it's at idle, when the butterfly is shut. And what that does is it helps the rings seal by putting a vacuum on the bottom of the piston. And as those pistons are jumping up and down in the crankcase, there's a lot of turbulence. And this right here helps suck all that turbulence out, as well as some of the gas fumes unburned, and goes back in the motor. We had a dry sump Fiat race car, 1.1 liter. We took the oil cap off and ran it, it lost 5 horsepower. Put the oil cap back on, gained 5 horsepower at the tires. That's a big difference. It makes more power, it runs more reliable if you get that turbulence out of the crankcase. So what we did with my car is pretty much the same thing. There's supposed to be a check valve on this bad boy, and I see that there's not. Very interesting. Huh. That needs to be fixed. Interesting, interesting. Anyway, this is the suction part of the turbo right here. And the suction part of the turbo, once it hits boost, has a lot of suction in here. Like I said before, enough to collapse this hose if you don't have it reinforced. So that's where it pulls vacuum from the crankcase from. Another good place to pull from the crankcase from for vacuum sources is right here. Bad places to do it are up here on the valve cover. Why? Because this camshaft is spinning and slinging oil. You don't want slinging oil to get into your to get into your turbo, right? So a lot of people go and put catch cans and stuff like that because they put a valve cover vent up here and it starts slinging oil in the turbo, starts ejecting oil, so then they add a catch can and they go on and on and on with the backwards mods. Don't do it. Use the stock one. Now, if you don't vent this correctly, and let's just say you open this up to atmosphere and you close this off down here, you're going to create a lot more problems than you think. This is going to be blowing into the atmosphere, and then your seals are going to start blowing out because the pressure isn't getting scavenged from the crankcase. It starts going in the head. It'll blow the front seal. It'll blow the front main seal down there. It'll blow the rear main seal down there. It'll basically find all the gaskets that can blow and blow them, trying to find a way out for all that pressure. So, here's what you do. If you got a 500 horsepower monster or above, look at how much that motor moved. The wastegate rocked it, hit it up, bent the hood. Turbo, same thing. Turbo hit the hood, bent it. Put a little gas in my old line. Bent the hood down there. I mean, let's face it, this wasn't show quality, but dang. As you saw before, same principle. 
Nice super glued JB weld super glue ceramic super glued this in here. The Loctite did that plastic nut. It's just a fitting with a hole and it goes straight to my catch can. My catch can is actually a AC accumulator <laughs> from a GM. I think it's a suburban accumulator for an AC unit. So it's got an air pressure hole on one side and Schrader valve. But it just basically plums back in here. It's not as complicated as it looks. Same thing. It's supposed to have a check valve, like I said. Mine has two check valves because I've blown them. 48 pounds of boost. I mean, come on. But yeah, three-way, same three-way coming from the crankcase box. Honestly, it's just an upgraded crankcase ventilation system from the factory. And it works fine, guys. Oof. Savage and jagged. So that's the skinny. Insane, right? No oil pressure. Car's cold. I haven't started it in, I don't know, weeks. Ball bearing turbos, guys. Third Coast Turbos, look them up. In summary, you want to remember to make sure that your crankcase ventilation works. You want to make sure that your flame trap is clean. You can actually take that box out with the two screws, pull it up, put it in the sink, pour some Dawn soap in it, let it sit for a couple hours, wash it out with hot water, slosh it around, you know what I mean? And get it to work pretty good. They'll have a lot of carbon and build up in them and sometimes they'll clog completely up and then your seals will start blowing all out of your motor and it's terrible. So you don't want that. Crankcase ventilation is important for fuel economy, performance, and engine longevity. So make sure yours is clean. And it's also important for gaskets and seals. So make sure yours is clean. Make sure it's hooked up right. Make sure it's got the check valve because as you saw we need a check valve for this. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Keep you Turbo World. As always, thanks for watching. Check out our other playlists, musics, parodies, and stuff like that. Politics, nature, science, and more. This is the number of... They did what I did years ago. That's what you have to do. But I, I am happy with progress. I'm, ha I'm prepared to sign it. And I'm ready to go. All right, guys. See you. Wherever he goes, I go. My buddy. My buddy. My buddy and me. So.